You think I'd leave your side, baby? You know me better than that. Think I'd leave you down when you're down. Peace and blessings you all. It is Akilah McQueen, a.k.a. Empress Awakening, the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of all those that I may encounter. That is my life duty as it is yours. Today, I'm going <laughs> to... Look at you, you look so cute. Today, I'm going to be talking about breastfeeding. Yeah, you can make like a million videos about breastfeeding and talk about it for hours. There's so much to know, so I probably won't cover everything today. But I do want to talk about some things that I feel is the most important. Um, so first things first, your baby uh -huh. is the most precious thing to you yeah. in the whole wide world. Uh -huh. And you want to give your baby the best, <laughs> the best ever. And so the... What might seem like cliche, breast is best. No, it's not. It's real. Real, real. Okay? Your breast milk is composed of not only just physically dense nutrients for your baby to develop and um, grow properly, properly and adequately, but it's also, it's also filled with emotional energy, spiritual energy as well. And so when we breastfeed, we have to be cognizant of our emotions and we want to make it a meditative state as well. Um, as much as possible in the world that we live in, especially if you're, you know, you're a working mom or you have other children, you know, breastfeeding can sometimes be like da 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 and other times <laughs> other times it can be very um a lot more meaningful and <clears throat> you can just spend some eye gazing meditation with your child, which is truly beautiful experience. So I recommend that you at least try to do that at, at least once out of all the breastfeeding sessions you have in a day. More if possible, of course. But at least once we um, make a conscious decision to have a very personable, intimate breastfeeding session with your child. Oh. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the reason why breastfeeding is so important as well is because it is the it, it comes from your body so it's filled with all the immunities that your baby needs to um <laughs> no thank you to uh protect it from any pathogens um trying to invade its body it is the best by far as it relates to formula there's no formula on the market no matter how they try to market it, that is comes close to breast milk um and just the word formula itself gives you an idea of what you're dealing with something that was created something that's unnatural um if you ever take some time to just look at the ingredients of formula you'll know exactly what i mean sometimes the first ingredient ingredient depending on which brand you use, is corn syrup solids or sugar or um, powdered non-fat milk. And then you have like a list of all of these um, laboratory-made synthetic vitamins that's been extracted from different, you know, fruits and vegetables and different animals. And so it's just a concoction of things put into a powder form to give to your baby over the divinely designed uh, elixir of life of breast milk. And this all has a lot to go <laughs> to do with in the past um, shaming <coughs> women for breastfeeding and even um, during the times when uh, but uh, there's been studies shown that even a woman that doesn't take that bet that great care of herself. Breast milk is still better than formula. So imagine if she to actually took the time to just, you know, um, hone in on her self care by making sure she's eating well, making sure she's resting, making sure she's hydrated, making sure um, she does what I was saying earlier, like the the intimate eye gazing meditative breastfeeding session. 
all those different and making sure that when she's breastfeeding she's not thinking about all these painful suffering or uh, situations or reflecting on things that bring up negative um, vibes or negative circumstances you know the more that she's more the more that we are more conscious about our actions when we are breastfeeding, the better the outcome of our children will be. And I know you've probably heard people say, you know, my breastfed child never gets sick. Or even if they had like a cold, it was like an overnight thing. Um, they never had to go to the hospital and different things like that. This is real. This is real. And for those um, who does happen to, like, because it's not to say that it's absolute. Because there's so much other things that can contribute to... Um, keeping this from being that way and it would be the opposite of all the other things that i was talking about if a woman is very stressed she's dehydrated she's not eating a healthy <clears throat> diet she's is thinking constantly about negative situations those things are going to affect the baby um that is breastfeeding so uh so let's get into when you actually are breastfeeding when you first start to breastfeed I'm not going to lie. For me, it hurt. Um, and it wasn't because she, my daughter had, well, she did have, she did, she was having trouble latching in the beginning. So I had to use a nipple shield um, to kind of help her draw out my nipple to be able to, to, to um, breastfeed. And for other women out there, you may have flat nipples or in, inverted nipples or, um, so which might cause some uh, latching issues for your baby or you may not have any type of different type of nipple and this you still have latching issues um it just all depends like my son he had no problem latching he latched the very first time we nursed um but so what what hurt for me was when the milk came down it's like little pins and needles was in my breast and i was like oh my god so on top of that you are experiencing um, after labor pains, which is uh, attributed to your uterus going back into its um, rightful place before you start to get pregnant. And when that happens, your the, your breast milk releases the, uh, the the hormones needed for it to de decrease and get smaller. Um, and so that process hurts in the beginning. Um, and that's not for everybody. Everybody doesn't go through that. But for people that I know, um, a lot of people have gone through that. And you will get through it. It's not hard. It's not horrible. It's, it's a feeling you feel. Trust and believe that. But it's not something that is like, oh, I'm done with breastfeeding. Well, you shouldn't feel like that. Like, you, we go to war over this thing. Like, because it's worth it. Um, and pretty much... Everything that's worth it, you have you have some level of work that you had to put in to get it, um, and so and, I mean, our children are worth everything, so they deserve, you know, for us to put in that work Mama. to make the breastfeeding session, the breastfeeding journey, happen. So even if you do experience some of that um, uncomfortability in the beginning with the pins and needles feelings and, you know, your uterus contracting, it's okay. You will get through it. It's not going to be forever. Um, sometimes women get plugged ducts if their milk is coming in and they're not dispensing as much as the milk is being uh, let down. And that can hurt. And there's plenty of different ways on the internet that you can find of how to um, release the plug duck. Um, and breastfeeding consultants can help you with that. Um, there's so many resources out there. So don't <laughs> don't uh, stay stuck by yourself because there's somebody out there who's had the situation that you're having and somebody can help you. So definitely look for it. Google can be your best friend, and YouTube can be your best friend. Buy some books, whatever works for you, um, and do that. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about with breastfeeding? I mean, it's, it's just so many wonderful things. Like, you decrease your child's chance of getting cancer, childhood obesity. You decrease their chance of... Neptune trying to walk away from me while I'm trying to do a video. <laughs> Come here, Nep. 
Um, so yeah, and it helps you to keep them from getting things like Crohn's disease and reduces your chance of your baby dying from SIDS, from getting colic, reduces the amount of colds they get um, from having any gastrointestinal infections. Um, it helps you to lose weight. And you, you might see a woman and she has a baby and like a few weeks later, she's looking good. I'm trying to tell you, she's probably been breastfeeding because it helps, you know, get your uterus back to place quicker than if you didn't breastfeed. Um, and it's just, it also really reduces the cow milking industry's production because whether you want to see this or not, the truth is, is that a, a cow's milk is for its own baby. Not for our babies, its own baby. And they miss out on having that connection with their own mother when we take their milk away. So, you might think it's just because I'm vegan that I'm saying this, but no, this is all across board. Like, it's not our milk. It's not, it's not, it was never made or intended for humans to consume. If it was, then women wouldn't make their own milk. We wouldn't have our own milk. That's what I what I, I feel. Yeah. If it was meant for us to have somebody else's milk for our baby, we wouldn't we wouldn't create some of our own. Um No. 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 Um, it also reduces your rea uh, children's reactions. Like I mean from getting uh, having allergic reactions. Um, it gives you a vacation from your menstruation and although, you know, having your menstrual yeah can be very powerful and magical time for you, sacred time for you, um, as you can you grow and learn about what what menstruation really is spiritually. Um, it's good, you know, to have that vacation because it's you it can be used as um birth control. Um and it just gives you some time away from having it. And another thing is is that I know you say like there's a big uh, thing going on about eating natural whole foods and formula is processed so it's another thing you don't want to give your newborn baby or your, you know your baby at all for as long as possible um processed foods and i think the last thing i want to say is that breastfeeding oh that the American Pediatric Association recommends that a woman breastfeed her child to he or she is two years old. Um, that says so much. And I don't even follow people's like doctor association, things like that, but right there is a golden nugget. So if you're listening to your pediatrician, you take your children to a pediatrician, and they're saying that the, the recommended age is two years old. Like, it's so important that you try to at least get as close as you possibly can to there. As long as you can go is best, you know, because, you know, it can be hard for some people. It can be time-consuming. It can be, um, your, your child can be very, like, on you. Like, my son, he doesn't nurse as much as my daughter did. My my daughter was, like, <laughs> like to breastfeed all day if I let her, you know. And sometimes that was very, um, sometimes that could be stressful because I just needed my own space sometimes to just, like, I don't know, go do something. But she just was a nurse all day. So I can understand that. But I still, it didn't matter. I, I, with my daughter, I did two years and seven months. And I only stopped because... I did a dry fast, not even thinking that my milk was about to dry up because I had been nursing for so long. And it did. Um, but it, it was still all in divine order because she wasn't too distraught about it. Um, and my goal with my son is to at least still make it to two years. And the world's average is four years of how long um, a mother breastfeeds their child. So the United States has like the lowest age um in which we actually breastfeed and I, I, I definitely know it's contributed to that long span of us not focusing on breastfeeding our children and using formula and giving into the supply and demand industry of capitalism um 
and men not understanding and knowing the value of a woman bonding with their baby through breastfeeding because breast is so sexualized here and it's not as sexualized in other parts of the world they look at it as like disgusting so they make all these barriers and rules and um presumptions about breastfeeding and that's why there's such a big uh <laughs> breastfeeding in public advocacy going on because we have to re re um construct our mind about things that we have been brainwashed to think and feel and see um and that doesn't mean that everybody has to be like you know pulling it out and <laughs> breastfeeding any and everywhere if you do cool if that's not your vibe, let it not be your vibe because it's not your vibe. Not because other people have things to say about it. Because that's not that's not that's not living. Okay? Everybody else is sitting eating at the table. Why can't your baby sit and eat at the table with you? Um and so I really I really love the the um breastfeeding in, in, in public advocacy. I do it. Um I did it way more with my daughter than I do with my son. And I, I, it's probably because he doesn't, oh, he's like, he'd be good when we go out. My daughter, like, sometimes we do nurse because he wants to and I will. But he wasn't like my daughter who was like, no, nah, mom, I'm hungry right now. I'm not going to wait. He's all like looking at stuff, chilling, laughing, not even thinking about it. So that's what I mean. Um, and, you know, men out there who's watching this video, encourage your woman. Um. Even, you know, even from my king, it's, it was an adjustment for him to see me, like, nurse in front of other men or nurse in public, you know, to the point that it made him feel comfortable because I have to show him what it is, you know? And so we all, we all have to do that. Show them what it is. Make it, normalize it for them. Um, let them know how important it is, how it is the best practice when you're parenting one of the best, one of the most important decisions you will make as a parent. Um, so definitely spend some time just talking about it. Be supportive of one another. Understand each other's feelings and thoughts about it. Um, but when it comes down to it, the most important person is the child. And so that means whatever is best for the child, the child should get. And breast is best. So if you that means you need to nurse to two years and it's going to be uncomfortable for the male. I'm sorry, my love, but you have to get over it. Get over it. <laughs> That's what's best. We're trying to create some spiritual um, <laughs> warriors out here that's going to elevate the consciousness of this planet. And they need everything, all the tools necessary, and that includes the right food for them. Okay? Well, I appreciate you all being out here um, listening. I hope that you got some informative uh, <laughs> insight on breastfeeding. If you have more questions or things that I didn't cover, please let me know. Um, and I'll try to cover it. Yeah. Oh, I know one thing I didn't talk about. I co-sleep. And... So it makes breastfeeding easier. I don't have to get out of my bed to go to another room to breastfeed my child. Um, so that's a perk for me. But anyway, I can do talk more about that in another video. See, then I said this in the beginning. <laughs> you can talk about this all day. But yes, definitely leave your comments below. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know whatever it is that you want me to talk about. I'll do my best. I am a mother of two. I work a full-time job as a music therapist in hospice care, and I have been working on my thesis, finishing my graduate career this semester. So I've been busy, but I'll do my best to keep on making videos to be there for you guys, as I know that you, some of you guys out there really appreciate the information, and I want to give it out there, and I'm going to do better. All right? Peace, peace, love and light. <laughs> I'll be there, hold you tight to me.